Well, hello there again. You know, I was fixing, I fixed me some breakfast and I was eating it and I got to watching some goofy TV show just to kill a few minutes while I ate. Anyway, it was about a, I was supposed to be a, some psychic and I was watching a story. Well, you know, I enjoy fantasies. I thoroughly do enjoy fantasies. When I was a little kid, even when I was older, an adult, I escaped from the everyday uh, rigmarole when I get a little upset or something. And I go into my fantasies in my mind, my imagination. And I can be on a sailing ship somewhere, or I can be hunting elk in some fine country, or I can be doing anything. Well, there are a lot of fantasies. And I enjoy, I talk about good and evil, right and wrong. Now, one thing about most of the older fantasies is they've always got a good and an evil. Uh, those books that that lady wrote about uh, Harry Potter, I bought them when they came out. I enjoyed every one of them. When the movies came out, I enjoyed the movies, but I enjoyed the first three. But after that, Something changed with the director, uh, Dumbledore character, the one that British guy had died. Another one took over. And, well, the whole theme of the movies after the first three became dark. And I didn't care for that. It was much more hopeful in the first one, the second one, the third one. And... Star Wars came out. That was way back in 77. I think I went to see that in a drive-in in 1978, the first one. Now, if anybody ever paid attention, that uh, Star Wars, the first three, chapters four, five, and six, were basically westerns on spaceships. <laughs> had the good guys and the bad guys, guys with a white hat and guys with the black hats. You go through there, well, now I always enjoy looking for the vein of truth that runs through all those kinds of fantasies. Harry Potter, those were good and evil all the way through. You could tell the good, you could tell the evil. Didn't matter if it was magic. Well, the magic wasn't right. Now, my belief in God, uh, there are wonderful, marvelous things that can be done. But uh, the black magic in that it's all humans that manipulate things. The good stuff are the things that God has created and provided. Now you get into that uh, Star Wars, the original four, five, and six chapter. The first one, Old Yoda explained to Luke about the Force. He said the Force is in everything. It's through everything. It does everything. It controls the motions and the movements of everything. And that's where the Jedi get their power. Well, you know that is exactly, you know that Lucas feller, I think he was Jewish. And if you get to looking at the old Jewish religion, it was right in there about the force. That's the power of the priesthood of God. Okay, that's what he, but it was in a make-believe story. 
okay, now you get you go and you lurk through all this kind of thing. You go back. Well, people don't understand. There is nothing on this world that happens without the power, the authority of God, the priesthood of God. Oh, I like get listening to these scientists, you know. There's this big thing about dark matter in space. I don't know if they're still talking about that one so much or not, but you know, if you pay attention, space is another ocean. We have oceans on this earth. We have lakes on this earth and the life in them and the movements and everything. It's just fantastic. Well, space is nothing but another ocean. I don't care how far you want to go out, how many galaxies you want to contain, combine into it, what kind of a universe you want to make, what kind of solar systems. And you get into it. See, that's all the power of God. Has the authority, has earned it over the eons of time. That's why I know God and Satan and these things are real. That's why I don't I don't believe in them anymore because I know they are. Just look at what's going on in this world. On this earth. They're out there looking for I think Star Trek calls them class M planets that can support life. It's not that the planet supports life. It is the fact that all life comes from that particular planet at that point of that planet's life. The Earth is a living being. Scientists don't seem to be able to fathom that. Uh, there are these guys, politicians, nobody. All these green people, oh, we gotta go carbons in the zero, we gotta. They can't understand that the earth is a living being. Well, uh, you know, go back to that Star Wars, you know how. Uh, Oh, they had Luke, and they had Solo, and they had Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Yoda. Well, they were my Princess Leia. They were all humans, except for Yoda. There's a couple of others. Chewbacca wasn't human. Well, in reality, in eternity, everybody is a human. The others are of a different class because God's work is to bring about the immortality and eternal life of man. Sea animals and other creatures, whales, porpoises, they can't commit sin. They can't obey God. They're just good all the time. Sharks are good. They do nothing except what a shark does. They never sin. Man is the only creature that can sin. So everything else can be saved into eternity except man. That's why the whole concept of gospel. That's the whole thing about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. That's the whole thing about the story of Adam and Eve. That's the whole thing about the story of Noah and the flood. Uh, you get to go on and paying attention. Think about it. Read. Study. Learn. Pay attention. If you're so inclined, get down and pray. Uh, there's scripture in the New Testament that says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. That will teach you all things. 
and doesn't get after you for ask. See, now there's a lot of things that are wrong. I've been paying attention. Christianity gets a lot of blame and guff for things that is false. Uh, people are always looking for power and money. They corrupt anything. Government, church, state, everything gets corrupted for power and money. Think about it. Talk to you again. Y'all have a good day. May God bless y'all.